If you found this video or you've been watching my channel for a while, then you're probably someone who's got a totally unnecessary home lab. Or if you haven't, then you probably want one. Well, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at something that's somewhat unnecessary, and that's adding a Pixie Boot server to your network. If you don't know what that is, it allows you to boot your computer over the network rather than trying to hunt around for a spare USB stick and burn an ISO image onto it. It's particularly common and useful for IT departments where they need to rebuild tens or maybe even hundreds of computers. Well, enough of that. Now let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be setting up a Linux PC. This could be bare metal, or it could be a virtual machine with the hypervisor of your choice. I'm going to be using ESXi because that's what I've got at the moment, but you can use Proxmox or some of the others out there. Once Linux is installed, then we're going to be installing a piece of software called iVentoy. They've already got something called Ventoy by the same developer, and that allows you to boot via USB, but this is the version that allows you to boot over the network instead. There's a free and a paid version. The paid version's only $49, but we're only going to need the free version for this. We're then going to set up the configuration in iVentoy and then set up a Samba share so that we can add ISO images easily. Well, now let's head over to the PC and get started. So I'm now going to set up the virtual machine with Linux on it so that we can use it as the Pixie Boot server. I'm going to be installing Linux on the virtual machine using my current Pixie Boot server. So let's power it up and see if it finds it. So here we go, you can see it's found something. And there we go, there is a list of ISO images and we just select which one we want to use. So now we've got a version of Ubuntu installed. I'm going to go to Firefox and then we'll go to the iVentoy website. Let's go to download and download the Linux version. This will take us to the GitHub where we can get the right version. So we want this one here. So I've now copied iVentoy to my home directory. And now we're going to go into a terminal window and start doing some setup. So now we're in the terminal window and we can see there's an iVentoy directory there. So let's go into that. And then we want to do sudo bash iVentoy.sh start. Now that's started, as it says here, we can actually go to a web browser and have a look at it from there. So we're now in the user interface, and the first thing we need to establish is what we're going to use as our DHCP server. So if you've got your own, then it's going to need to be capable of Pixie booting. And if you haven't, then there's a built-in one. So there's three different options. So if we go to configuration, then you can see these options. So there's internal, external, and external net. There's some documentation which goes through what each of these means. If you're happy to have your Pixie Boot server on a separate network, and then the ones that you want to boot on that network as well, then this is probably the simplest, because then you can set up iVentoy to be the DHCP server, and then that will also handle what BIOS mode is used, so whether it uses BIOS or UFI when it's booting up. Most things use UFI these days, so I don't think it's much of a problem, but let's go through the other options. So with the external mode and the external net mode, this means that you're using your own DHCP server, but for this, you're going to need to have next server and boot file options in your DHCP server. So if you haven't got these, then you're kind of forced to use the iVentoy one instead. I use a Unify router as my DHCP server, so these options are available to me. So if I go into this network, for example, and scroll down, and then more options, you can see here I've got DHCP boot server. So then I can put in the server IP address and the file name which is in the documentation. I've used UFI because you tend to use UFI for most things for booting these days. If you set iVentoy to external mode, then it does something really quite clever. It snoops the DHCP request and then figures out when it gets a request from the server, which file to present. So whether it presents the BIOS or UFI. So in this setup, it means that you can boot from either type. Under external net mode, you can't do that and you have to provide the specific file like I've done. But this allows you then to do it across VLANs. Whereas this setup, you can't do it across VLANs because it can't snoop the traffic. So that's basically the difference between these two. So now back in iVentoy, we're going to go to configuration and I'm going to set it to external net. So we're going to use my own DHCP server and I'm going to specify the file. Also, I'm going to change this from GUI to CLI. I have found that booting from some images seems to cause some problems for some reason with the GUI. 
And also with the resolution, you might need to set it to 800 by 600. If you get some strange issues with the screen when you're pixie booting, then that might be the reason. You can also change this in the option when you've booted as well. So I'm gonna leave it as this for now. We've then got a Mac filter option, which I think is nice. So you can either set it in deny or permit mode. So you only allow certain Mac addresses or deny certain Mac addresses from Pixie booting. And then here, image management. So we haven't talked about the ISOs yet, but they'll show up here once you've added some to a certain folder. You do need to press refresh every time you add a new ISO image, which I think is a bit of a shame really. It would have been nice if it would automatically pick these up. So if you don't see your ISO image when you pixie boot, then it means that you need to go in here and press refresh. Well, that's about all there is to it in here. So what we need to do now is add some ISO images to the folder so that they're available via Pixie Boot and we can see them in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up SSH and Samba and then we can upload the files from any computer nice and easily into the ISO folder. So I'm now back on the Linux VM in a terminal window and the first thing we want to do is establish what the IP address of this machine is so that we'll be able to SSH into it. So we do ifconfig and you can see that it's not installed at the moment, but you can type this command to install it. Now that that's installed, let's do ifconfig again. And we can see we've got our IP address here, 192.168.2.143. Now it's always a good idea to update Linux before you do any other installs, so we're going to do that now. sudo apt-get update, and then sudo apt-get upgrade. So now to install SSH, we need to do sudo apt-get install open SSH server. Now that it's installed, we need to do a couple of other configuration items. So like ensuring that it starts up on boot and also enabling it through the firewall. Now sudo ufw allow SSH allows it through the firewall. And finally, sudo systemctl start SSH starts the service. So now we've done that, let's load up a Windows terminal and see if we can SSH into it. So we want to do ssh username at ip address. Uh, accept the fingerprint for the first time, yes. And you can see that we're successfully SSH'd in now. So if we do pwd with that, ls, and we can see the iventoy directory. Now we've got SSH up and running, but I'm going to do some of the stuff in here instead. So now let's upload an ISO image to the Pixie Boot server. So I'm now in a directory where I've got an ISO file. So I'm not SSH'd in, I'm just on my local machine. And now we're going to use scp to upload that file. So if we do scp and then the file name and then the username at IP address colon forward slash directory, then it should work. The first time you'll get asked for fingerprint. Now we can see it's uploading to the server. Now back in iVentoy, let's go to refresh and we can see that the image is there. So fantastic. So we've now got an image ready and we've got the server ready. Apart from, we need to press start here. Before we can start using this Pixie Boot server, because we use the external DHCP, we need to configure that in Unify. So I've gone to the network that I want to be able to Pixie Boot from, and I've already got an IP address in here because I've already set up a Pixie Boot server, but in your instance, you'll need to tick this DHCP boot option, which will be under advanced settings. And then you just need to add the server IP address and then this file name for Ufi. Look at the documentation if you want the BIOS one. I think it's just BIOS at the end instead. So we'll change this to the new Pixie Boot server and see if it works. So I've now created an empty virtual machine and ensured that it's set to boot in Ufi mode rather than BIOS. And now we're going to start it up and see if it finds the Pixie Boot server. Here we go. So we can see it's discovered something. And there we go, just like that, iVentoy is loaded and you can see the image for true NASCAR, which is the image we uploaded. So the final thing we're going to do is we're going to set up Samba so that it's easier to upload ISO images. So we're now back in command prompt, so we want to SSH back in again. So firstly, we obviously want to install Samba, so we do sudo apt install Samba. So now that's installed, we need to edit the Samba configuration file to add a Samba share. So it's sudo nano etc samba smb.conf. So I've just scrolled down to the bottom of the file. Now we're going to paste in some information. So here I've created one called ISOs and we've got the path of the ISO. So we put it into iventoy slash ISO. 
Then whether it's read-only or not, well, we want it to be right so that we can actually upload the files. And then you can also specify valid users so that only certain users can access this share. If we do Control O, Enter, and then Control X, then that saves it and exits. Now we want to add a firewall rule for Samba, so let's do that. So sudo ufw allow Samba. Now let's start the service, sudo service smbd start. Now finally, we have to actually create a password for the Samba. So to do that, we do sudo smb password and then specify the username, the operating system username that we're using. And there we go, it's added. Now we want to restart the SMB service. Now finally, let's see if we can connect to it. So I've gone to this IP address and we can see there's a folder called ISOs. And you can see it's asking for credentials, so that's fair enough. And now it's got the image here and we can upload new images. So before we rack things up, a couple of other things to mention. So once you've started the service once, the next time you start it, you're going to want to use this command here with the minus R in it. Also set it up as a service so that when you reboot the Pixie Boot server, that the service will start automatically. So you're probably going to want to do that. Another thing to mention is that I did it on Linux, but there is actually a Windows version of this as well. So you can use it as Windows instead. Another thing you might want to do, although we've got the ISO directory over Samba now, so it's easy to upload them, you might want to store your images in a different location. So you can use symbolic links for this. So if you look up how to create symbolic links, then you can put your ISO images anywhere, really. There's also other things that Ivan Toy can do that I haven't looked into myself. Things like being able to auto-install things and add scripts into the install process. There's also a HTTP server so that you can host other files if you wanted to as well. And you can access the ISOs directly over HTTP. As you can see, it needs a bit of setup to start with, but once you've got it set up, then all you really need to do is keep on top of the ISO images that you need. There's a list of ISO images that have already tested and working on the website. So if you use one that's not on that list, then please consider going on the website and adding yours. Well, that's it for this video. So please comment down below and let me know if you've given it a try. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already and liking the video. And thanks until next time.